Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. And do, from games to productivity applications and everything in between, this is a feature that is, well, present. It is something that is overwhelmingly common, but maybe we've never really, you know, stopped and thought about how it's built under the hood. So today, let's do exactly that. Undo, to put it simply, steps you backwards through the actions you have performed and reversing each one as you do so. As it turns out, this can be implemented easily using a data structure called a stack. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to what a stack is, but essentially the idea is, it's a data structure, it's a collection of items modeled after a stack of paper. The idea is, every time you want to add something to this collection, you add it to the top, just like a stack of papers, right? And every time you want to remove an item, you start removing from the top as well. This creates a pattern called lethal, last in, first out. And if you think about it, that is exactly what undo is doing. The last action you've performed is the first action we're going to actually reverse when you say undo. If you say undo again, the second last action is being reversed. So on and so forth until you, well, exhaust the entire stack of items. So yeah, as you can imagine, Every single action you do is essentially just represented as an item that is added to a stack. Every time you attempt to do an undo operation, the last item from the stack is removed, its action is reversed, and well, that item is discarded. This then allows the user to either, well, perform a new action which is then added on top of the stack again, or to undo further, in which case the process repeats. Now, undo sometimes comes with a counterpart, which is redo. And the idea is to, well, reverse the undo operation. Turns out implementing this is quite easy as well, because all we need is yet another stack. Each time we perform an undo operation, we remove the item from the undo stack and add it to the redo stack instead. This way, we're not discarding the actions, right? The user can step their way through and all the items just move from one stack to the other. When the user says redo, we simply do the same thing in the opposite direction. We remove the item from the redo stack, apply the change again, and put it back onto the undo stack. This allows the user to basically undo all their actions and then redo it all back, and everything will fall in place in the exact same way. By shuffling items between two stacks like that, we always preserve the order things will always come out in the opposite order when we are doing undo operations, and that of course is necessary because we are reversing the action. And when we are putting things back, they're happening in the right order because now we're not reversing the action, right? We're applying the action itself. So that's the idea. By having two stacks, you essentially have a full history of every action you've performed. Of course, there is usually one limitation, and that is if you've undone several steps, and you perform a brand new action, you lose the ability to redo the things that, well, you've undone. While this may sound like a limitation, things usually have to be this way, the items you've removed, right, the items that you've undone, cannot really easily be stacked back onto other actions, because this may result in inconsistencies in the final result. Because of this, if you've actually undone several times and then performed a new action, the redo stack is clear. You can no longer recover those items from the redo stack. That's just, you know, for consistency sake. So yeah, it's an unfortunate limitation of having an undo and redo operation. That, ladies and gentlemen, is all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Hopefully you have a better appreciation of an extremely common function. If you want to find out more about stacks and queues, we have already done a full video about that before, so you can check out the card up here. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Friday Minis. I hope you've gained some insight today. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV on nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.